The homework assignment today will be taking the graphs that you made last time and sort of fine-tuning them up with better vocabulary. So if you were to have a graph that said y equals 2 sine x, you should be able to recognize that because the 2 is in front of the sine, that 2 is the amplitude of the graph. And so I'm going to graph the regular sine function with the five-point method, and I would like you to start graphing with the five-point method. So the sine of zero is zero, the sine of um, pi over two, 90 degrees, is one, the sine of pi is zero, the sine of three pi over two is negative one, and the sine of two pi is zero. So here's a sine function. If I were to change and graph a sine function with an amplitude of 2, that would make everything in the graph twice as tall. So it would go up 2, down 2, and back. One thing that students commonly get mixed up is the difference between negative sine x and cosecant. So I'm going to start off with my black graph being y equals sine x. And the sine function is 0 at 0. It's 1 at 90. It's 0 at 180. It's negative 1 at 270. And it's 0 at 360. And so my black graph represents the sine function. If I were to then graph y equals negative sine x, this function would just take all of those points and reflect them over the x-axis. So the negative sine graph would look like this. Sort of the sine graph upside down. Now that's a completely different thing than the cosecant graph. The cosecant graph is the reciprocal. If I take 0 and find the reciprocal, that's undefined. So wherever the sine graph is 0, the cosecant is undefined. If I take 1 or negative 1 and flip them over, they stay the same. So 1 becomes 1 and negative 1 becomes negative 1. If I take where the sine is 1 half, the cosecant becomes 2. So the sine is 1 half at 30 degrees. It's 2 right here and right here. The cosecant graph becomes the reciprocal sine graph looking like this. So you need to know the difference between amplitude and reciprocal. If the amplitude is negative, it reflects it over the axis. But the reciprocal function is completely different. That's what cosecant is. The next example, we're going to talk about the difference between 2 sine x, where in this case, the 2 reflects the amplitude. And sine 2x, where in this case, case, the sine affects the period, but the period is not 2. The period is the period of sine 2 pi divided by this 2, 2. So the period is pi. So let's first of all look at 2 sine x again. If I were to graph my black graph, y equals sine of x, there's my base graph. The sine graph is 0 at pi, and it's 0 at 2 pi. It goes up 1 and down 1, so your sine function looks like this. If I change the amplitude to y equals 2 sine x, that changes the graph so it's twice as tall. So if this is 1, it's going to go up to 2, and if this is negative 1, it's going to go down to negative 2. So sine 2x looks like this. Putting the 2 where this red 2 is on the inside changes the period. What changing the period does is it makes it do its whole up, down, and back thing in half the time. So from here to here, from 0 to pi, it's going to go up to 1, back to 0, down, and back up, like this. And it's going to do the same thing repeat here. So you can think of it two ways. One is a way to think of it is its period is pi, which means it does a whole um, 
cycle. It does its whole cycle in pi radians. The other way to think about it is terms of frequency, which I'll talk about next. So right before we talk about frequency, let's talk about period again. A normal sine function goes from 0 to 360. It does one cycle. So this is one cycle of the sine function. It takes 360 degrees, or you can also say one cycle is 2 pi for the sine function. Here's my sine function. Here's pi. Here's 2 pi. The sine function goes like this and back to 2 pi in one cycle. So if I change this number to 2, since it's normal cycle, period is 2 pi, if I take 2 pi divided by 2 and I get pi, this is the period. The period is how long it takes the sine graph to do one cycle. So if its cycle is pi, it's still going to go up and down the same height, but what it's going to do is it's going to go up, down, and back, do one full cycle in pi, do the next full cycle, and the next pi. These should be the same height right here across the bottom. I'm just graphing kind of sloppy. So that's period. If the period is pi, then the frequency is 1 over pi. Frequency and period are reciprocals. Saying the period is pi just says that it takes the graph pi radians to complete one full, one full cycle. Saying so period is the measure of how many radians it is per cycle. Frequency is a reciprocal of period, so frequency is a number of cycles per radian. So they really say the exact same thing, it's just the pi is on the bottom, and so it's still saying that you do one full cycle in pi. And so the only thing that I always do personally is whenever I see frequency, I just flip it over and make it period because period's easier for me to think about. But um, it's kind of like the difference between miles per hour and hours per mile, or dollars per pound and pounds per dollar. Take whichever way you think about it more easily in your brain and just always do it one way and know that they're reciprocals. The only thing new we're going to add in is phase shift. And I want to back up and talk about what phase shift looked like for this graph. If I were to graph y equals x squared, it starts here. But if I were to graph y equals x squared, um, x minus 3 squared, then that took the graph and it shifted it 3 to the right, and it was like that. Well, phase shifts for sine and cosine functions are going to be the same. So if I graph, let's say, y equals cosine of x, the cosine graph starts up here, goes down and back up in a full cycle. So here's 0, here's 180, and here's 360. There's your cosine graph. What if I were to take the cosine graph and do a phase shift so that it was shifted to the left 90 degrees? So I'm going to go x plus 90. This is going to take every value of the cosine function and move it to the left 90 degrees. And so I'm going to put in negative 180 and negative 90 here. If I take this and I move it to the left 90, it goes here. If I take this point and move it to the left 90, it goes here. If I take this point and move it to the left 90, it goes here. If I put this point, move it to the left 90, it goes here. Everything to the left 90 looks like that. And you can see the sine function sort of right here. So you can see that the cosine of x plus 90 is the same as negative sine x. There's going to be a lot of um, parallelisms between cosine and sine functions when they get shifted. And so you're going to have to think about each shift.
let's make, now take a look at phase shift with a sine function. So I'm going to look at sine function, and I'm going to look at y equals sine x first. So I'm going to graph this the sine function. Sine function, this is pi, this is 2 pi, this is positive 1, this is negative 1. And I want to do a phase shift of y equals the sine of x plus pi over 2. So, and actually, let's do it the opposite way. Let's do x minus pi over 2. So I'm going to take the sine function, and I'm going to shift everything to the right 90 degrees. Well, let me put in my 90 degree angle here. Here's pi over 2, and here's 3 pi over 2. So I'm going to take the point that's here, and it's going to the right pi over 2. I'm going to point, take the point here, and I'm going to move it to the right pi over 2. I'm going to take this point, and I'm going to move it to the right pi over 2. And I'm going to take the point at negative 1, and I'm going to shift it to the right pi over 2. And so my sine function, shifted to the right, is going to look like this. I'm just going to connect it back to the start of the graph. There's my sine function shifted to the right 90 degrees. Towards the end of your homework assignment, it's going to start to get more complicated. We're going to have phase shifts and period changing happening in the same graph. Let's look at y <coughs> equals sine of... <coughs> 2x plus pi. <coughs> so in this one, I'm going to have to refer to the formulas, which are actually on your notes from last class. And so we have that the period is 2 pi divided by b. So the period for this graph will be 2 pi divided by 2. So it'll be pi. So it's basically going to take the sine function. And instead of it happening where this is pi and this is 2 pi, it's going to take the sine function and have it do its whole thing right there in pi radians. But now it's going to take the entire sine function and it's going to have a shift. This shift is going to be to the left. And this shift is going to be what happens when I solve 2x plus pi equals 0. That would be 2x equals negative pi. That would be x equals negative pi over 2. It's going to be a shift of when I solve that for 0. So the phase shift for this problem is going to be to the left pi over 2. And right now, this graph has a point at pi over 2 is right here. If I were to take this entire function and shift it to the left pi over 2, then everything is going to go exactly that far to the left, and the graph is going to come down and up and down like this.